You're about to listen to a Gaming Stooges podcast with your regularly scheduled Stooges. I'm Jack. The internet calls me Cloud. And I'm Landon. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion, and if you do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, following us on Twitch, or joining our Discord. Let's get on with the show. Hey folks, just one more thing to mention before today's podcast episode. We were blindsided in between actually streaming this to Twitch and before the high-quality audio went out to streaming services by a Nintendo Direct announcement and airing, so we don't talk about that in today's episode, except for something you'll hear about a little later, but we do intend to talk about it during the next episode in a couple of weeks, so hope you guys are looking forward to that. Otherwise, let's get to the podcast episode and enjoy. Thank you. I have a very important question tonight, folks. What yes. is that question? What does your personal hell look like? Jack, your thoughts? Um, I'm going to say a Nintendo Switch with no runner 2. Mm. Wait a minute. Mm. Oh, God. That's, we live in that world. Okay. <laughs> Cloud? Uh, I think my personal hell is that Nintendo announces they're pulling from making hardware and all of their games just go mobile. That's a, that's a good, that's a good yeah, answer. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Nintendo sold to Activision Blizzard. God! Oh, God! Oh, God. That's, that's probably even worse. Yeah. Like, I would take, I would take Nintendo sold to Konami over Activision Blizzard. Uh, yeah, actually. At least we get a least... Mario Pachinko machine out of it. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. You, my answer, you ask. Yeah, I ask. Yes, I, I live it every day. It's called work. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how you folks? How you folks been? It's been a couple weeks. Um, have you guys been up to anything new? Um, I'll let you go first, Claude. Eh, not really. I've been kind of up to the same stuff. Been playing a lot of uh, Xenoverse Two with mods. Uh, I have been getting to some other Dragon Ball games. Uh, I played Legacy of Goku, and I could not beat that game without cheats, because that game sucks. But, uh, mm-hmm. spoilers, we have a podcast coming up in the future eventually, which is why I'm playing all these games, so I'll talk about it when we get there. Um, also, I've been playing more Zelda, not nearly as much Tears of the Kingdom as uh, Landon probably has, but I've been, I've been getting around. Apparently, I'm a little further into the story because I haven't done as much of the side stuff as him, but I should probably get to more of the side stuff. Um, have I done anything else new? Um, oh, uh, my girlfriend's in the process of moving in, so she's going to be moving in next month. And uh, Nice. Oh, some sad news. Uh, one of my... Uh, friends that I go to play Magic the Gathering with uh, multiple times a month. His dog that we've known for a very long time is going to be passing away. I don't know how much longer he has left, but he had a tumor and it burst. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Does, he was really does your friend, does your friend want a cat? Uh, he, already, he, because... he already has a cat. Thank you for does the want another one. Yeah, does he want another but, one? But no, that that dog was really, really great, great dog. Like I don't, I'm not a big dog person, but I love that dog. I when I started like thinking about it after I like read the messages, I was like, I actually teared up. And it's been a while since I teared up. That I'll miss that dog. That dog was cool. His name was Ryder. Uh, Good dog name. Other than that uh i don't think anything really new on my end yeah i basically covered everything how about you jack okay i haven't had time to play much lately i've been have busy having a social life and going to shows i'm not trying to brag it's just been the way that it is he goes um, you're bra- you're, you, can go- s- you can you can argue it's bracking now, but when we get to talking about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and you have maybe five hours <laughs> logged in. I have more than five hours. I'm already. kidding. I'm I- I'm just he has five and a half hours. Please. Shut the fuck up, Landon. <laughs> five and a half. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I've been to uh, a lot of shows. Uh, when was our last podcast? Two weeks ago. Yeah, two, two weeks, weeks ago. So, on June two 1st. Ago. God, in the past two weeks, I went to a fucking two-day hardcore fest, and then I went to Justin's area of Chicago, and I saw Ew. my boys, the King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, two nights in a row. Uh, and that was sick. Uh, and I've been uh, doing a lot in the going to local shows and just other than that I have been playing a little bit of Zelda uh, s- still just working on finishing the Mario Galaxy Let's Play as well because we're getting close to the end of that um, I'm looking forward to the free time that will be that will be allotted added. to you what once lo- Mario Galaxy once over. I'm done with let's plays yes at least for at least for the time being i've kind of at a point where like i've been thinking about it and i'm like i don't want to swear off let's plays entirely i want to be like i don't want to do them regularly anymore but if i ever like but just feel like the urge, if there's if there's like a game that like would fit better as a let's play and you just feel like playing yeah it, you'll just yeah it'll be kind of like reserved for that sort of thing yeah that makes sense. yeah exactly exactly but or, as I'll far as regular let's plays goes then yeah mario galaxy is it for sure Mario Galaxy 2 will be a th- I do want to do that soon honestly because I it's been a long time since I played it and I'm excited to revisit it but not in the near future but that will be a stream for sure. That game is too long for a let's play. Imagine the number of stars but there's double that. God. No. So what about you though, Landon? What's no. new with you? Um, what's new with Landon? Landon, I think I mentioned a lot of this actually last night uh, when we were streaming Metroid Prime Remastered on our Twitch channel. Go check that out. Um, Go check I, out the Twitch channel. I mean, well, I guess if you're listening to this on Spotify or YouTube say, or whatever, then yeah. Yes, there's going to yeah, be a lot of I guess exactly. I'm, I guess I'm only it's thinking software. of the present tense where we are currently hosting on Twitch. Twitch yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do these live on Twitch too, which you yeah. can watch it. So if you're listening yeah, if, outside of Twitch, just know if you want to hear us live before the better quality audio versions go out, join us on Twitch. As always, uh, join our Discord. Like, you know, we're friendly people. Uh, except for Justin. Except, except for Justin. Except but, for Justin. You know, you don't you don't you don't have to talk to him. He'll just talk to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, join our Discord and find out like when our streams are so that you can join those. If you like our podcasts, you can listen to them early by joining us live uh, on twitch.com slash gaming studios. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, so I've been reading more fables. Um, I'm on volume five. Uh, so I read through, I finished volume three and read through all of volume four uh, like recently. Been playing a lot of Zelda, played a little bit of Legacy of Goku 2, and today I swore it off because I was like, this is it's too much. Um, and like uh, Cloud said, we'll, we'll talk about that um, in more detail. Um, but what I'm really excited about... Is tonight's sponsor? Is to... Well... At least get it. Let us get halfway through the podcast. All right, before fine. I can get up and go get it. Fine. Come on. It's our time. Sponsor time comes later. Yeah, I'll tell you when to roll the Patreon like thing, and then I'll walk <laughs> off and I'll go grab it. Um, no, what I was going to say is what I'm really excited about is today's topic. See, it was a segue. That you, okay. It was a different segue, but it's still a segue. Um. We're talking about some of the the summer game announcements today. That's what the some the of them. That's says. what the title yeah. had is. Well, I say some of them because uh, apparently a lot of companies are going to be at Anime Expo next month, um, and there's bound to be announcements and stuff then too. Mm-hmm. So if I throw out the caveat that we are recording this June fifteenth. Yes, we recorded yep. this live June fifteenth. If anything gets announced after June fifteenth, we can't talk about it tonight because it didn't happen. Yeah, yet. and the audio versions of this goes out usually. The tw- it's going to be eight days later. Yeah, eight, it's, yeah, we, eight days. So, 
So it's going to be on the I'm, I'm, 23rd. Yeah, so I have to preface it everything when I'm like, which uh, I don't know. I don't speaking know. of, if you're listening to this on our actual like podcast uh, uh, export, um, happy Sonic's birthday, because that today is, true. is Sonic's uh, tw- 32nd birthday. Damn. Yeah. We're not doing anything for not Sonic do- this yeah. year. We're not doing Fuck anything for Sonic. that blue bitch. We... we, no. we we, we're going to talk about some Sonic stuff today, though, so... We will. Yep. We will, though. We'll do one thing for Sonic. And that's yeah. because Sega announced a new Sonic game. We've we've already milked that sacred cow too much. Oh, yeah. You can go back to our old content. So much Sonic stuff. I'm honestly sick of it. <laughs> it's we've mostly Sonic stuff. We've let's played so many Sonic games. Yeah. I still have And yet there's so more. many that we still haven't. I still have we one always, more I have to do. There's always the more. Yeah, there's always more. Anyway... Uh, today, so we're going to talk about, like, there was five bigums. Well, there was five dollar football. Th- three bigums and a lot of small stuff, um, depending on your, your definition of bigum. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, there was a lot of stuff. Uh, Summer Game Fest happened. Um, there was a lot of different, like, indie related, uh, like, showcases that happened. Um, we're not going to have time to go over all of that. So, no. uh, that's one thing. Uh, what I would like to start off with is, did you guys watch the PlayStation, Summer Game Fest, Xbox Showcase, the Capcom Showcase, or Ubisoft Forward? Because those are the main five ones that we'll be uh, talking about today. I watched the PlayStation Showcase. Okay. Okay. I did not watch any of the others, but thanks to uh, Landon being a good friend, he did link me to a rundown of basically all the other stuff. So I looked through stuff, but I did not actually get to watch the pre- the other presentations, which kind of sucks. I kind of wanted to watch the Xbox showcase. I should probably follow their accounts so I can stay more in tune, but whatever. Uh, I haven't seen a single I a, thing. Honestly, I, was gonna say, I have a feeling I know your answer. Yeah, I I've been busy. I haven't been paying attention to it, just about anything in the gaming world. We're, like, we're kind of just news... dragging Jack along tonight. I I get my news from this disc from our Discord. So <laughs> you know, How dare that's you sad. Have life. I'm sorry. I'm and by that I mean I mean it's it's kind of sad. Um. All right, so we're gonna and. I'll say this, I got a chance to watch uh, just the Summer Game Fest. I watched some of it live. Um, and then I watched a little bit of Capcom, um, but I was at work in the middle of like another meeting, um, so I couldn't watch it. Also, the Wi-Fi at uh, the store I was at was god-awful, so there was no way I was going to do a Can't meeting. Can't really watch plus. anything yeah, when that's happening. Yeah. But I could play a little bit of Legacy of Goku 2. So there was that. Um, okay, so we're going to start with the PlayStation. Um, PlayStation had their big thing. Uh, it was May? It was May, like May... What? 24th? Yeah, it was, like right? near, it was like near the end of the month. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to read through basically all of the games. Uh, let's do a Smash and Pass. Yeah, if there's a game, you it. guys. If there's like a it. game title that sounds interesting smash otherwise we can pass uh first game is fair games what is fair games perfect uh hell divers (laughs) 2 uh pass Pass. i i watched i watched the short case and there's so much i don't care about to be honest yeah uh immortals of avium don't know what that is. It's Pass. from EA. Pass. Yeah, it, it's a new EA first-person magic shooter. So. Oh, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just another trend uh, follower. Yeah. Um, Ghost Runner two. Um, I wouldn't mind talking about this one. Not like, sure. not like big on the the genre, but it is nice that we're getting more like games of this genre for the newer gens, because like. When I think of the genre, the first game that comes to mind is Mirror's Edge. And 
you know, obviously Ghost Runner, the original Ghost Runner. So it's it's good that we're going to be getting more of those games because, like, man, I'm so sick of, like, games coming out that are, like, AAA and they are always the same genre. So just any sort of genre variety. And, yeah. you know, the first-person platforming games seem kind of cool. I've never gotten the chance to play them, but they always have, like, at least peaked my interest in it. It has potential to be fun, and that's really all I could ask for on it. That's like all I really want from a triple A title is that it's fun. Doesn't have like I feel like The Last of Us has almost kind of <laughs> ruined the gaming Do industry it. Yeah, because ruined it. Because every every game wants to be The Last of Us in terms of like being a mature story and like taking itself way too seriously. But none of them are as good. So I don't think it's entirely The Last of Us' fault. I mean, it is probably, like, the the real big one. But I think yeah. just kind of in general, that generation was just, like, the ballooning of AAA development endeavors. And then, like... Like, like the cinematic experiences exactly. type like, shit. It's, it's not that these games that started headlining that stuff are bad. Like, yeah, I, I mean, you have, you know, like... No. Stuff like... You know, GTA I'm not Four saying that at all. Last of Us, like they're good games. It's just it kind of caused a ripple effect where everything's just playing too safe. No, The Last of Us is a fantastic game, but yeah. I am saying that every game wants to be The Last of Us, and none of them are as good. Right. Yeah. Games should be fun. You know, like The Last of Us is like a well-made game. It's not the most fun game. <laughs> Like, it's, I mean, like, it's not, it's not, you know, boring or, ba like, bad to play, but we're getting off topic. Um, either way, uh, I wish, like, more AAA games just, like, you know, just focus on the gameplay. Just make a fun game experience, and if this game is that, then I might play it one day. Uh, Lanny, did you have anything you wanted to say about it? Nope. I will say the next game, I actually am legitimately interested in. Phantom Blade Zero. Oh, I saw the trailer. That was like the first game at the PlayStation Showcase. I was like, this looks good. Like, yeah, what I like about it. I mean, I'm a Who sucker for by? that style. What's up? Who is it developed by? Uh, S Game. I don't really know like any of their other stuff. I just saw, you know, really like intricate sword combat. And also it's got like, you know, more like fantasy like feudal like some feudal japan sort of stuff going on it's just it's it's just cool it's different i like it i like when more well i like when games go a little bit more that route instead of you know the typical stuff that we usually see so any more of that stuff i, I like it and phantom blade the game had cool presentation i don't think they showed enough gameplay like actual gameplay with like ui elements though they kind of just showed off a lot more cinematic stuff but Looks interesting. I'm interested. I actually, I actually cannot find like a uh, history of uh, development for S game. I just get results for Phantom Blade Zero. Hmm. So, I wonder if they are like a team made out of like other disbanded teams or something. Possibly. Could be. And this this is their first major project. Because I was gonna say this like specific team. If, if it's their first project, they've got to have, like, people with experience, because it did look a little too good to be, like, a first attempt kind of game. But yeah. Okay. Uh, are we are we moving on, then, to the next one? Did you have something about Phantom Blade Zero you were about to say? No, not really. Okay, next. Uh, Sword of the Sea. This game looks fucking sick. I mean... It, it's Journey, but Tony Hawk. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I, it's Made by Giant Squid Games, uh, so it's made by the team that worked on Abzu and the Pathless. Yeah. Uh, so it's within the same line of Journey, um, and it looks a lot like Journey in terms of setting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big open desert area. Um, but, but you have a sword that you ride like a skateboard. Yeah. Yep. And I'll say I've played, uh, I played both Abzu and the Pathless, and both of them are really good. So, um, so yeah. far you have no reason you to believe to... that this won't be good. 
yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you just you just have to tell me Giant Squid Games is making a new game, and I'm like, okay, like I'll <laughs> buy it. So yeah, I'm but, I'm also very much looking forward to yeah, it uh, looks cool. Sort of a C. Yeah, it's like one of the three games that was announced uh, at the PlayStation Showcase, and I'm like, sign me up. Uh, next is the Talos Principle Two. Don't care. Uh, pass. Hard pass. Uh, we've got Neva. Neva, ever, ever. Um, Which is being oh, made by the same the made team. Green. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm in. So I'm that. I watched the trailer, and I think it was all cinematic. There it was, was all no, cinematic. There was no gameplay. Yeah. There was no gameplay. But so the art I'm, style is so good. Yeah, I'm holding my judgment until I can actually see some gameplay because I played through Gree and I was like, okay, um, so if this is just like more of that, then I'll probably pass at first. But if it's something a little different, then I'll probably jump into it. Okay. Um, after that is Foam Stars. <laughs> the girl. Okay. The, the girl. Can I just say the girl in the thumbnail for this video that's on this um, this article that we're looking at? It, she looks like she has. There is porn of her, <laughs> like a lot of it. There probably is. I'm gonna, gonna put gonna it say, in spoilers. She looks, like, she, she looks she, like an Overwatch character. She looks like an e girl. Yeah. But uh, and there's definitely a lot of porn of her. So I will say I'm interested in this game full well knowing it's literally just the PlayStation's answer to Splatoon. Well, made it's a Square by Square game too. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's, it's like, made by it's made by Square. It's supposed to be like Splatoon like but it's, Isn't it releasing on like it's going to be a multi-plat, I feel like. I believe too. it's supposed to be multi-platform, but I don't know if it's going to switch cuz I think that the um like the sudsy, like the graphics that they're using for like that kind of those kind of effects might be too much for this one, but they might be able to pull it off. I mean, they probably aren't coming out. I don't. I'm pretty sure it's not coming out day and date. If they get a Switch version, it's probably going to be a while down the line. They're probably going to have some. I'll other tell you this: studio like do like the port. It could play on the Switch. I don't care what the game looks like. It could play on the Switch. The development team is probably not going to put the work into it because they're cowards. It's it's probably going to be a thing sort of like, you know, with, you know, near Autonomata, stuff like that, where, like, Square Enix will get somebody else to do the port, and if they get the right people to do the port, like Virtuous or somebody, it'll be a good port, but we're not going to get it right away. But mm -hmm. I, think, I think it looks kind of cool if it's not, like, super high price tag, like, if they don't, like, retail, full retail price this thing i'm inclined to try it out if they put out a demo i'm inclined to try it out just because it's it's splatoon except with like different setting and i want to see the mechanical differences and stuff like that so it'd be kind of cool uh but i mean other than that it's just kind of like okay neat uh next is the plucky squire uh did you guys see anything about this I, uh, I mean, I watched the I watched the whole PlayStation Showcase. Yeah, the, you did. The style for it's kind of cute. Um, I don't know if it's the kind of game that I'm like super excited about, but I mean, it's 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 cute, so I think that it's gonna have a good audience for it. So, I think it might be something you would like, Jack, because it kind of some of. Some of the mechanics remind me of Super Paper Mario, where you go from, like, the 2D storyboard, or the, like, the book, yeah. and then you can go into the real world. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at yeah. the trailer. Yeah. yeah. That's so, interesting. It was a game that I was like, okay, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Um, after that is Teardown Console Edition. Pass. Yeah. Um, and then there was a big one. This one was a big one, yes. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Remake. Is, is getting a remake. Oh, um, yeah. Metal Gear Solid Delta. So, I followed some news behind the game. So, just to confirm with people, uh, it is being made in-house by Konami. Um, 
but they do have uh, Virtuos helping with it, or they do have a studio helping with it. Um, oh, what, who, who, who's the... I can't remember, but um, they do have people helping with the game outside of Konami, but it's mostly Konami, and they are not redoing the voice work. They are using the old voice work. Whether that's up your alley or not, uh, you know, that has pros and cons, obviously. But just know, voice actors for the game were not contacted to redo any old lines or do any new lines. They are just, uh, it's, it's basically all but confirmed they're using the old uh, dialogue and old voice lines. Which is weird because then it's not really a remake, it's more of a remaster. Because if they're it's, using the same voice lines, so then they're not going to really add too much new content i think that's a topic that we could do a whole podcast on like what constitutes a remake or a remaster if it, they are using the same engine which i don't think they are it's still a remake. no they're not uh, yeah. because because they don't have the old code to work with or at least they don't have all the old assets to work with so it's still a remake but i mean how much of it are they going to change we don't know they didn't show much besides a lot of cinematic so yeah. but i mean here. It's Metal Gear Solid 3, and a lot of people love that game, so it's... I'm looking forward to it. It's, Let's see how Konami fucks that one up. It's, it's yeah. a cautious optimism sort of thing. Yeah. We'll see. Alright, next one's a fun title. Let's see if I can say it right. Towers of... Agaspa. Agaspa. Um, has... what, is, what is this Far Cry it's, bullshit? It's, it's Breath of the Wild again. Oh yeah. It's, okay, I don't. Split, I don't give just, a shit. It's just another. Oh, we don't have Breath of the Wild on PlayStation or Xbox, so here's a game that's like it. Jesus Christ! So PlayStation has their own Breath of the Wild and now and and their own Splatoon. Yep. Except. Yeah. Just a, a factory of originality, that company. Yeah. They're not made by PlayStation. One's a Square Enix, and another yes. one's made by. I I know, but it's still games. the PlayStation showcase. Yeah. Next up, they talked about Final Fantasy 16, which is a game we knew about. It's, yeah. I was going to say, as someone who passingly, like, you know, looks at Final Fantasy games, I mean, it looks cool, but this is, like, the fifth time we've seen it, so, like, who cares? It's coming out soon. They already, there's uh, a demo, uh, you can play it. I haven't played yeah. it, I should, but you can play it already. There's a I demo. was about to say, there is a demo, so, um... Maybe I'll get a free copy, and then I will not play it. Uh. So there's that. Uh, next up is Alan Wake 2. Alright, this is... I'm amazed that they're making a remake to Alan Wake, because nobody played this game. Not and I actually played it. What? It's no, a this, sequel. This is a sequel. Yeah, this what is... I, what the fuck? Wait, what the there fuck was only, there was only There was only one Alan Wake game. This is the... This Hold is on, the no, shut... Sh what did you I said say? Remake. You said remake. Did I say Jesus Christ? Yeah. Sequel is what I meant to say. <laughs> oh, okay. You didn't realize you, know, you said they, sequel. They no. did do a remaster of Alan Wake for PS5 and Series X uh, and Switch. Remaster. I think Switch got a got a cloud version. But yeah, Ooh. no, this is a sequel. I meant to say sequel. Okay. I'm a fucking idiot. Excuse me. We know. It's um, fine. Continue. but. I played this game actually way back in the day, very briefly at a friend's house. Uh, the original, it, not this, because this game's not out yet. I, 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 I know that. I meant. All right. Continue, Alan Wake. No one's it, gonna. No one played the original. No one played the original. It's it's weird that they're making another one. So. Um. I think it's cool of, though. They did mention that uh, there is no physical release. And I lost yeah. all interest right oh. away. They, uh, oh, they are only releasing it digitally. It will be fifty nine ninety nine, so the previous generation's full retail price, not current gen's full retail price. And that was their whole justification. They were like, well, we can sell it for cheaper by not making a physical release. And it's like, bruh. Like, you could just make a physical release and also sell it at fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah. So I really like Control which was Remini uh, Entertainment's last game. Control's fantastic. I would highly recommend trying out Control. And it is tied into the same universe as Alan Wake. So when they said, we're going to shit on Landon's whole deal, which is buying video games, 
and having video games that he can hold in his hand. Um, I was like, well, oh well. So much for that. The game can look cool and neat and whatever. I'm, I'll never play it. Yeah, uh, so but this could be take. like, this could also be an entire other podcast topic, like physical releases and digital releases and stuff. Uh, like, I mean, personally, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't play Alan, I hadn't played Alan Wake, so like, I don't have anything to like say in this matter, but I mean, Alan Wake seems like the kind of game that deserves a physical release, so it's kind of dumb that it's not getting one. Yep, but whatever. Anyway, moving on. Uh, next, uh, they talked about, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and Who they cares? gave it its new release date. Snore. Uh, okay. It's uh, Revenant Hill. Revenant Hill. Fuck yeah. New, new game from Night in the Woods Company. Say the word, though. The word? Smash. 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 Okay. I'm smash. not gonna say anything, smash. but smash, smash for him. Smash. 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 Uh, but... Yeah, fuck yeah. I We have no idea. Yeah, really no, there's like no about. info on it at all. There was like a, a cinematic trailer and there was a cat that looks like May, but it was just yeah, a, so a cat, not an actual it, cat person. Yeah, they did the same sort of thing as Neva uh, Neva earlier in the show where like they showed us a trailer to tell us that it exists, but we don't I mean, it's fair to it's fair to assume that if it's anything like Night in the Woods, it's probably going to look like how it did in the trailer, which is you know like a two D a stylized two D side scroller like adventure story game. The cat does have a name though. What Twigs. is it? Twigs. That's I love it. So there you go. That's all you need to know. It's worth whatever they give me, whatever yep. they charge me. So. I will play it. A thousand percent. All right, next, Dragon's Dogma Two. I uh, never played the original, but I'm happy yeah. for people who, you know, did and wanted a sequel, like Justin. Yes, me. Same. I never played the original, but I've heard incredibly good things about the original game. So there being a sequel, obviously, that's pretty high. If you want a well-made open-world RPG. A la not Skyrim. There you go. Dragon's Dogma. Mm. So it's actually it actually functions. An, a, an actually good game unlike yep. Skyrim. That's, that's my take. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is coming to PlayStation VR 2. Pass. Just because Pass. I don't give a shit about VR. Right. Uh, Marathon. Okay. Um, I'll say Smash here. Ew. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! This Go is a bungee game. Eh, yeah, yeah. I don't really care. I mean, I thought it looked cool based on like what they show. Like they didn't show off a whole lot though. Like they didn't. They kind of. It was another like mostly all cinematic trailer. Sort trailer. Of thing. Exactly. But I mean, I like the fact that they're like. I'm not a bungee fan, but I I like that the fact that they're like revisiting an old thing that they did well before they were even known because this was apparently they had a game called Marathon back out in 1994. Honestly, I didn't know that Bungie was a thing before Halo, so I mean, it's kind of cool, but like like we said with a bunch of other instances, we didn't see enough stuff to make like make our an informed decision on whether or not we want these games or not. Okay, I'm going to skip through the next couple because I'm sure they're all passes. Concord! Whatever. New Gran Turismo. Uh, I saw the trailer for that before Spider Verse, and it is a movie. It yeah. has the guy from Stranger Things, and that's the only thing I remember about it. It's uh, Project Q. Oh God! All right, <laughs> Smash, but not because I'm excited, just because I want to talk about it and get it out of the I, way. I want to see a it crash and topic. I want to see it crash and burn so badly. So there's a few problems with this thing. One, it is exclusively a remote play device. It only streams to the device with Wi-Fi. That's it. There's, it's not like, you know, it's not like a handheld devoted thing where like you can like download the game separately to it and play it like, you know, a Steam Deck sort of thing or anything. No, 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 no. Just a streaming device. Yep. And it looks really weird. 
it's literally just a, like a smartphone size or like tablet size screen with a dual sense cut in half and put on the sides. Uh, if this thing is too expensive, which it probably will be because it's a Sony peripheral, this thing is going to absolutely crash and burn because you cannot sit here and tell me this devoted streaming device that's literally just a controller and a display that connects via Wi-Fi. If this if this costs more than like two hundred dollars and two hundred dollars is already highballing it, that's too expensive. I might be passingly inter I won't buy one, but I'd be passingly interested in it if it was like one fifty or something. You charge more than two hundred though, you're insane. It's going to be probably like three hundred dollars or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah, I, I don't I expect it to be two fifty, three hundred dollars. I don't expect it to be an affordable price for what it's supposed to be. Yeah, no, it it looks fucking stupid. And did they not learn their lesson from the Wii U? <laughs> like Sony didn't have a lesson with the Wii U. No. I mean by that I mean did they not realize that Nintendo fucked up with the Wii U? Yeah. But this is different. It's a and streaming device. It's, it's not a controller. It's I mean, it, even then they actually like I can't remember if it was in an interview or I, if it was in one of like the videos where they were presenting it or whatever, but one of the things they mentioned was basically the same thing that the Wii, that the Wii U was supposed to do, which is, oh, if somebody's using the TV, you can use this to play the game. And it's like... That... Yeah, no, that was literally, like, the okay, original... Who cares? That was, like, the original business model for the Wii U. Like, the first E3 trailer in 2012. Like, they turned... Like, uh, someone's playing New Super Mario Bros. U on their TV, and then, like, Dad turns on the ball game, and then it pulls up the gamepad. It, yeah. It, it, we... <laughs> Time is a flat circle. It's funny, like, Sony wants to be Nintendo so bad that they're they also really digging do. up the things that Nintendo has done wrong and then tried to do them themselves. It, yeah, I mean... Like, it's uh, gonna probably... Not, there's, there's gonna be, like, some Sony diehards that are gonna buy this thing anyway, but, like, it's... It, yeah, it's fucking pointless. But guys, they also showed off new earbuds. I mean... Hey, guess what? Honestly, those are more shit. interesting than the Project Q itself, to be honest. I, I mean, yeah, actually. Oh, and uh, Spider-Man Spider -Man 2. 2. I mean... They devoted 10 minutes to Spider-Man 2. It I mean... It's a game that, like, people knew was coming. We just hadn't seen it. And then they were like, here's 10 minutes. Smash? And but I also, didn't... I don't have a PS5. So, no. till I do. So then... Meh. Who cares? Um, they didn't even announce a release date during this showcase. They waited until Summer Game Fest to announce a release date. That's funny. That's so weird. Yeah. yeah. Like, they, they somehow decided a release date in between those two events? No, I'm, I'm sure they had the release date, and then Jeff Keighley grabbed Sony by the balls and was like, I need something, please. <laughs> and Fair. Sony was like... All right, fine, whatever. I mean, honestly, uh, as as not too exciting as it sound like as it sounds like we're like talking about like a lot of the stuff from the showcase. This showcase showed off a lot of stuff that we'd see just more of in like later showcases. So like, a lot of this stuff is already front loaded, dude. Like, if it's not too promising now, just wait till we get to more of the stuff. Yeah. Okay. Next was Summer Game Fest, um, and yeah, there's going to be some repeats uh, of some stuff, so let's just get through it. Uh, Path of Exile 2. Who cares? Pass. Sonic Superstars. Yes, Smash! Smash! I'm, I'm still, I still, I'm like, like part of me is still like, don't get your hopes too high. I kind of want to wait until I play it for myself before I, like, buy into the hype. But it does look very promising. I Yeah, I've seen a lot so far, because they, after the announcement trailer, they also had some extra gameplay stuff shown off, like, in snippets here and there. And, like, it looks very promising. Honestly, the one thing I'm worried about is how they're going to manage to do high-speed platforming gameplay like Sonic with a new Super Mario Bros-esque four-player co-op. I don't know how that's going to work out. We're going to see, though. I wonder if it'll have online. I really hope it does, but knowing track records with these kind of games, 
Probably not. We'll see. Yeah, if, we'll see. If, it, if, if it does have online, you better believe we have to play it together. I will not oh, yeah. take no for an answer. We would have to figure out a system. True. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get there. Um, so, yeah. Sonic Superstars. Uh, next, uh, they showed off some gameplay for Mortal Kombat 1, which got announced ahead of Summer Game Fest. Yeah. Eh. Um, I mean, it's it's Mortal Kombat. You know. Okay. So I think, the, I think the name is stupid, but I do yeah. like Mortal Kombat, so... Yeah. Looks cool, name's stupid. Basically, Mortal Kombat, as you know. Moving on. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 got a new trailer featuring a new character. Don't do not Baldur's give a Gate single 3. shit about Baldur's Gate. Uh, and then, Marvel's like Spider-Man 2 got a release, got date. release date. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, October boy. 20th. Witcher Season 3 got a trailer. Netflix series. I... Um, <laughs> yeah. Cares? Liza P got a release date and they announced a demo, which <laughs> is... A Soulsborne Pinocchio game. Interesting. L- Lies yeah. of Lies of P just makes me think that Lil P is going to show up in this game. If Lil P doesn't show up in the game, then it's not not it's worth not, any money. It's trash. Go watch yeah. the Great Ace Attorney vods. Go watch the Great Ace Attorney vods right now. This time, it's actually fucking relevant. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sandland. Smash. Uh, that game I, looks fantastic. I, I was about to say I have I haven't looked at this yet, but just from looking at the thumbnail, I'm like, that's a Toriyama, isn't it? And then I yep. glanced at the description. Yes, it's like, yeah, yes, it's, it's a Toriyama. Yeah. So Sandland is an Akira Toriyama manga series. It's very it was very short. Uh, like it was only a couple chapters long. Um, like it's like you can buy it's a single volume. Uh, is how condensed like the whole story is. Oh wow! Um, whereas you play as Beelzebub, uh, who is uh, like uh, the, he's a demon in the world. Um, it's an interesting world. I've read I've read the first chapter. I need to read the the rest of it. Um, but the game looks fun. Uh, it's like a mix of overworld, like you running around, uh, and like mech combat. I was gonna say it was. Uh, I noticed like the mech combat and then like the environment kind of reminded me of like Borderlands in a way. Yeah. It's 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 no. very cool looking. But I lo- I saw I when I saw like Beelzebub actually doing like these like flippy combos and stuff like that. I was like, sign me up, let's go. Yeah. Like so... once I saw the combo strings you can do, I was like, ah, oh, this is gonna be hype. I'm I'm excited for it. I. Was not expecting a Sandland video game. There's also a Sandland movie that just got announced too. So I'm like, what? So here we are. Yeah. If you like Akira Toriyama stuff, check out Sandland. If you like Dragon Ball, learn to like something else, please. Um, okay. <laughs> Land, it's like I'm there so was... sick of people only knowing Dragon Ball from Akira Toriyama and nothing else. When I mean... do we get the Doctor Slump game? fucking wish uh remedy showed uh showed off more of alan wake 2 um i mean we talked about alan wake 2 already john carpenter's toxic commando i i mean i love john carpenter but like yeah it looks like a like it's a zombie shooter which yeah. already, like, for me, resident sleeper. I sleep. Done. Sign um, and it looks like a four-player co-op, like, So it's a, it's a Left 4 Dead type. It, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0 Season 4. Snooze. Uh, Twisted Metal TV trailer played, uh, which did not show off any cars. So That's so weird. Like, don't care. the whole point of Twisted Metal is, like, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, s- some of the characters are pretty, you know, well-liked, but, like, it's... It had Sweet Tooth, but... You gotta have the cars! That's, that's the whole yeah. premise! Yeah. 
They showed off a cinematic trailer for Chapter 4, Season 3 of Fortnite. <laughs> okay. Um, now, something this article does skip over. Like, there was some other games. Uh, this one is not... Uh, so, we're using Polygon's, like, article. There was a, there was a lot of, like, indie games that went uh, had been gone over. Um, and they also had Marvel Snap. And the only reason why I bring up Marvel Snap, which is a mobile game that's already out, is they had a Pro ZD skit uh, that led into the Marvel Snap stuff, and that was really funny. Because Pro ZD, Song Wong. Um, yeah. I don't know why they don't have that or some of like the other games that got announced. Um, and then, yeah, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yes, Smash. All right, so... have your fun. We're going to peek. <laughs> Um, I'm not, I'm just going to say, here. I'm just going to say real quick, uh, I wasn't like the biggest fan of remake because they literally stretched out Midgar, which is like a four or five hour thing into like, you know, 40 hour game, which had like a lot of walking and expositions talking, and, uh, but like they have to have a considerable amount of the game of like the original game in this installment. So I'm a little more excited. They didn't. I, they didn't confirm well up to what point of the story they're ending off at. But my theory is, it's probably going to go to like the point when Aerith dies, and then they're probably going to have the third part be the rest of the story. That's my theory because if Aerith's in this game, they probably aren't going to want the players in like 2023, 2024 to be like, oh, here's this character that's going to die halfway through the game. I'm, like they're probably going to go right up to when she dies and then cut it off there, so you can have her for the whole game. So that's still a considerable but, amount of the game. Do you think they're gonna change anything about the plot? Because they've already yes, like yes. poked at it a lot. Yes, in the first they. Game. That is one thing in remake. They sh they started like tying a lot of other parts of the Final Fantasy VII extended story into the base story. This is, this is the, really it's not a remake. I I don't know why they called it remake. It's literally like a a retelling, a reimagining. So I totally do not expect them to leave the story as is for the next part. They ha they're going to do a lot of different stuff, I'm sure. So Will I mean, Tifa die? For, for all for all I know, I could be spewing bullshit. Maybe Aerith won't actually die. Maybe she somehow survives. I don't know because the That'd plot's be getting weird. Rewritten. It would be weird because it is a very important plot point. My theory, though, is that she's still going to die. But you'll get her for the entire game, and she dies at the end. That's my theory. But okay. yeah, all right. I'm I'm excited for it. It's Final Fantasy VII, and it's more of the actual game part of the game I liked because Midgar is just so overdone at this point. So I'm excited for this. All right, so let's move on to Xbox Showcase. Xbox. But, Le but Landon, don't you think mm -hmm. it's time for today's sponsor? Roll the Patreon subscription reel. There are none. Talk about it. No, talk about the Patreon. Oh, the so, Patreon. Uh, Patreon, we have one. Please go and uh, check out that patreon.com slash gaming stooges. Um, we still haven't set it up yet, but sometime probably in between when we're airing this and when it's uh, going to go out to the general export outside of twitch um i expect for us to have our middle tier six dollars where you'll be able to get exclusive content we plan those to be uh monthly or by or like semi-monthly tier list videos so you'll be able to just hear us go at it and just randomly you know just rank stuff in tiers i think that's going to be pretty exciting um if you were to subscribe at the ten dollar tier you would not only get that extra content but you'll also be getting a patron shout out every time we do one of these episodes currently we don't have anybody though so there's nobody to shout out but we do still thank all of our viewers we do still thank any patron supporters regardless of what tier you're subscribed to and just giving us five stars on your favorite streaming app like spotify or wherever or liking the upload on youtube helps out a lot just Please make sure you do those little interactive things. It helps us out a ton. You want to reach out to as many people as you can with it. But uh, yeah, patreon.com slash gaming studios. we got a Discord. Join that if you want to talk to us. And uh, I'm sure the boys have a thing or two to say about 
a uh, company that we wish was sponsoring us. Well, after the last episode, I don't think they will ever, but that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, true. Mainly because we came out with the best tagline for their food, which the is... The best tagline. It'll help, it'll you, help finish. you finish. <laughs> anyway, Jack, why don't you start? Because you have last time's show and tell. Yeah, I, well, uh, I found some of the Tillamook orange cream, orange and cream ice cream at my local Kroger the other day. Um oh, yeah. I wish I had gone to get it when Lennon got his. I've j- it's just been sitting here for since the stream started, so it might be melty. Oh, see, but this is why I waited. You should have used the opportunity yeah, to go and get up while I just spewed nonsense about the patron. Patreon. It's a little yeah. melty, but it's edible. Describe it. It's for, delicious. For the audience. Like, give it words. Creamy. Orangey. <laughs> yummy. Okay, no one cares. I have campfire fucking peanut, peanut butter, butter cup. cup. And unlike some weak coward that will go unnamed, Jack, um, I have not eaten any of mine at all. We're going to have a live tasting right here. Live tasting? Wow. How yeah. is it? Let's find out. Drum roll. Let's find out. So it is... Uh, vanilla. It has pieces peanut of peanut butter cup and marshmallow. Okay. That's where it gets the campfire. So let's go. Mm. It's good. Oh, oh my goodness! Like that that part that I just got was like a lot of marshmallow and a little bit of like the chocolate peanut butter. That was excellent. Mm. Well, you heard it here mm-hmm. first, folks. Mm -hmm. this needs to become a permanent flavor so does this yeah really both of these do these are both limited time flavors so you should check out your local grocery store because um, you might actually be able to find some good Tillamook ice cream yeah if I can find it out here in the midwest over 3,000 miles away odds are you can probably find it wherever yeah Mm. All right, uh, Landon, did you want to ease us into oh the my next? God. Uh... Oh, 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 what? Oh, I have to stop this? Fuck. Yeah. I'm going to put mine away before it becomes soup. Yeah. So I'll be um, right back. Talk about upcoming events slash upcoming podcast shit. Oh, okay. So um, we have i so i didn't actually really mention this on any of our previous episodes so i might as well just say um i'm the main host for these podcast episodes tonight we're doing it a little differently because landon's a little more informed on gaming news uh outside of the small little snippets that i usually go for so um uh, anyway i actually typically have a notepad list and i have a list of um upcoming topics that we can do for uh, different podcasts so we have quite a few different things planned in the future um, we have a Zelda Tears of the Kingdom uh, discussion podcast episode we're going to do uh, for our next episode so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that uh, I'm sure Landon is I'm looking forward to it as well sometime in the future not a planned exact date we are going to be doing a Uh, video on Dragon Ball games and I've already got a plan for like the structure of how that's going to work because there's a lot of Dragon Ball games so I am planning out um, the most the easiest way to go through it and it's going to be it's going to be fun though Uh, we have a bunch of other ideas obviously we've got some tier list ideas for upcoming patron exclusive content it's like two ideas going around right now um, if you used to watch our Let's Plays, we've got uh, an, uh, a plan for our Let's Plays in a tier list. That's going to be a fun one. That will be ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's one in the future. We're also going to do one on, like, just Nintendo franchises and series. That's going to be ridiculous as well. When we talk about, like, tier list video, like, tier list uh, episodes... Like we're we're going big. Like there's there's gonna be crazy stuff happening there. 
Um, Hell but yeah, yeah. There's, there's a bunch of other ideas. I don't want to spoil too much of the stuff that I have in my notepad file, but I hope people are looking forward to episodes we have planned in the future. Yeah. Okay, Xbox Showcase. Oh, boy. They started off with Fable. New Fable game. Oh. I'm ass. not a Fable fan, but, I mean, it is Fable, and I've watched my friend play Fable way, way back, and I did, like... I found it kind of interesting. I just... I don't know. I've just been so far removed from, like, Western fantasy uh, games like that. But, I mean, when he played it, it looked really cool, so I'm sure... Hopefully this one's good too. I mean, it's a, it's it's fun. It's it's nice to finally see Fable back after so goddamn long. He totally skipped out on the Xbox One generation pretty much entirely. Completely. Yeah. They didn't I think get the a re- last Fable. I was gonna I say the they didn't even Fable re-release the re- any of them. Did they? No. No, they didn't. I think the last Fable game was Fable, Fable. the Connect game. Oh right, yeah. Was it the Connect game? I forgot they I did a Fable that, right? game. But yeah, no, the fa- Fable was like big on the 360. Completely absent from the Xbox One. So. Yeah. Um, next, uh, South of Midnight. Another game with a cinematic trailer that doesn't show off any gameplay. So what the fuck is it even about? Who knows? Star Wars Outlaws. Pass. Sure. It's whatever. a Ubisoft game. It's a Ubisoft game. So it's, let's pass. It's Star Wars. Well, it's less that it's Star Wars and more that it's a Ubisoft game. Let's be real. Pass. Yeah. 33 Immortals. Lennon's going to smash this one. I did not one. even know about this game. So. Um, I don't actually think I watched the trailer for this one, uh, but it's made by uh, Thunder Lotus Games, who worked on Spear Oh, Fair, just, which you did a stream for. I did. This What'd you do? Hello? Oh, uh, Cheese Whiz knocked my my drink over. God damn it, Darn Cheese Whiz. Um, so hopefully that doesn't stain. Um, so I'll get back to you on 33 Immortals. Um, Payday 3. Never could get into sure. Payday, honestly. Eh. Cool. Jack. Yes. Guess what? Smash. Smash. Okay. Persona 3 Reload. Persona 3. Oh, okay. But Did yeah. you actually get to see like any of the trailer or gameplay or anything? No, I did not. I still haven't. It, it looks fantastic. They definitely like it looks I've, like they they brought it up to the quality of. Persona I've seen I've seen so. I've seen screenshots. So um, I've I've seen like some uh, snippets of video uh, stuff. It's um I've heard though. It doesn't have the content that was added in FES. Nope. Which is already a letdown because it's like when you do a remake. There's still no definitive version of Persona so 3 and there never fucking will be. Exactly. It, it's going to have some of the main story content that was added in FES, like, but not FES. like the bonus stuff like post. It, it's not going to have the answer. Yeah. It's not going to have the answer and it's not going to have the female main character. Right. Yeah. Which is but, dumb. That said, it is nice to see a remake for the game it, to catch it up to modern standards. I'm excited it, for it. I'm probably going to get this on PC because I also want to get I'm, Persona 5 Royal on PC because I already have uh, Persona 4 Golden on it. So I'm so. iffy. I'm iffy on the fact that they revamped the entire voice cast. Like the people they chose are good and talented voice actors, but like. They already had a lot of good and talented voice actors in the original game, too, so why not just bring them back? I mean, I can see some of them being too busy to work on it, but, like, all of them? True. Makes yeah. me think um, that they just didn't reach out. Our our live viewer, Al, is asking which version will be streamed someday. Um, That's a good question. Use, pro- probably, for ease of use, probably this upcoming remake, but, I mean, if probably. somebody can find a way to hook up... Uh, a PS2 to record FES, maybe. I have FES on my PS3, so. Oh, yeah, so I mean, if you can get that hooked up, then you could do yeah. FES that way. Could. Um, but yeah. Depends I'm... on who actually streams Persona 3, so. Right. It'll probably be Jack, though. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I've been meaning to 
play Persona 3 again anyway, so it'll be cool. I'll to... say this. This remake has made me more interested in playing Persona 3 than any of the other factors around playing Persona 3. Because, like, we recently, they ported Persona 3 Portable to Steam and other platforms. And that did not go well because that apparently was not a very good port. Like, the audio quality yeah. is worse than the PSP original, which is weird. And no physical release. Yep. No At physical all. release. Not and even in Japan. None for any system, for any region. Yeah. And as Jack mentioned, FES was la- was basically last released on PS3 as a PS2 classic. So yeah. if you don't have access to that version, uh, this is the only way you're going to play Persona 3 it's like, in a in a decent way in 2024. I are if I, I mean. wanted to if I wanted to play a download only version of Persona 3 Portable, I would dust off my Vita and play Persona 3 Portable on that because that's a yeah. a, a thing. So I'm I'm yeah. interested With in better Persona quality. 3 through this remake. Yeah, I'm hoping Reload does well because it's like. I'll, I'll like in, in the same boat as Cloud is it, like I own it on like multiple platforms on like Vita slash PS TV. Um, I haven't touched it, but also because it's a little bit more archaic than right. even like Persona Four. Yeah, and Persona Four was like enough to where I was like, I'll play through it. But like yeah. when you have to go through the same dungeon, it is the same dungeon. Exactly. Forever. So at least so. freshening up the presentation and, you know, kind of touching up the other stuff with, you know, bells and whistles, that'll be me. Make it work. And hopefully I can control the other party members because that's another thing. Persona 3, the original, like all versions. Yes. Except for Portable. Except for Portable. And Portable is the actually... one you like. Yeah. I mean, it's so the least... See. It's the least good version of the game presentation-wise, but unfortunately, gameplay-wise, it's the but best Gameplay-wise, it's the best one. <laughs> so so you literally can't win. Yeah, can't yeah. Win. Persona 3 There's, is the one where you can't win. To be fair, There's, it's not like it's not like Persona 3 is unplayable like no, without direct not. control of your party members, but they can be pretty stupid, especially I will, I, Mitsuru. <laughs> I will relent. I've seen a lot of like really like big Persona fans say that like, oh well, it's kind of you know it's fine if like Persona Three you can't control all the party members because mechanically like they build around that. But like, I just want to control my party members. I just I don't care. Yeah. And if I'm playing an RPG, I want to be able to control my party members. Unless it's an action RPG, then you know the other characters do whatever they want. But if it's a turn-based RPG, I want full party control. No excuses. So as long if they add that in in this in reload, then I'll I'll buy it. That's it. That's all I want. I'm fairly certain that they have already yeah. said that. So okay, okay, Let's we move said on enough about because this. we're we're gonna talk even more about Persona Three uh, eventually. So let's just move on. Uh, Avowed, a new game from Obsidian Entertainment. Oh, uh, I tried oh. watching the trailer, and it. I guess it looks. Okay, okay, I guess. I mean, Max got it. <laughs> I don't dis. I mean, like, Obsidian is capable of making good games. Sure, but they made a Fallout for they, three. They made the best Fallout game. I'll Fallout I'll 1. say this. I feel like the trailer probably didn't do the game possible justice because it just felt like generic presentation trailer sort of thing. Yeah. But I'm sure the game's probably going to be pretty good. All right. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Uh, sea of Thieves is got an update with The Legend of Monkey Island. Cool. I don't care did about you know Sea of they Thieves, still... though. Yeah, I was going to say, did you know that they still make content for Sea of Thieves? I Apparently. I mean, I'm willing to believe suck. anything at this point. If Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 can get DLC seven years later, then whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2014. 2014? Well, the, best, the best game they... Yes. 2024. 2014. Uh, 2024. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, this is obviously the best game they announced this entire presentation. 
Now, I'll say this. The Microsoft Flight Simulators are yes. actually really, oh, yeah. really good flight simulators. Oh, yeah. So if that's so, your thing, you're hyped. Yeah. If that's your thing, you're eating. But, I mean, I don't care. Um, But, yeah. It's it's a thing. Also, there's going to be a Dune expansion. Cool. Uh, that is pretty cool, I'll admit. Yeah. Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Did anyone ever play uh, Hellblade? I did not. Uh, no. I think I own it. Um, Moving on. Uh, like a Dragon, Infinite Well. Oh, you know what was not talked about in the last, uh, it, when we talked about Summer Game Fest, um, which they did show off, was Like a Dragon, a man with, without a name or whatever it is. I, I didn't um, know about it. So it's one of the spin-offs. Um, it's from the Yakuza series, uh, which has been rebranded to Like a Dragon to fit the naming scheme in Japan. Um, it stars the original main character, uh, but uh, like it's like a side game. Oh, so wait, uh, is that? Probably... I was gonna say that. So that's what they're doing now. Like the series is just called Like a Dragon. Yes. Yeah. So they so, so they basically use the name of the game Yakuza Like a Dragon to transition the series into a new name outside of Japan. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So if you see Like a Dragon, that it's Yakuza. is it's Yakuza. Um, so they had one where it was I forget the actual name. Um, like I said, it's like uh, a man without a name or something like that. Um, and then they also during the Xbox showcase showed off. Uh, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which uses the main protagonist from uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon as the main character for this one again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he also shows up on a beach completely nude, um, and it's funny. So there's that. Um, so, yeah. Um, Do you want me to try pronouncing this one for you? Because yeah, have a have a good uh, time. Kunitsugami, Kunitsu, Path of the Gods. Yeah, I, was, I could have gotten it anyway. It's what a hack and slash from Capcom. So I mean, something pretty cool. Neat. Uh, there's going to be a new Forza Motorsport. Sure. And it's just called Forza Motorsport. Motorsport. Yep, pulling yep. a uh, Fast and Furious on us. <sighs> I, I, hate um, when, I hate when companies do that. I don't the give only, a shit. The only time I'm remotely interested in Forza is the Horizon games because, you know, mechanically they're just more interesting, but cool, I guess. Uh, yeah. Overwatch has a new thing called yeah. Overwatch 2 Invasion. I, on, on this topic, I saw a... Uh... Shit, hold on. Let me try and pull it up there was a hard drive article that i saw today oh yeah blast from the past remember overwatch 2 <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh who fucking cares i mean uh, it's... no it's it sure whatever i mean like if you're into overwatch like it's not going to remove the sour taste in your mouth over all of the controversy that's been surrounding Overwatch 2. Like, Jack, do you also, know what's been going on with that? Yeah. No, yeah. it's, so it's like, fucking stupid. They, Yeah, they, they canned the whole single-player campaign. Yep. But they didn't tell anybody, even though they had this planned, that they were canceling it for a long time now. And then they were just like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're not doing the single-player campaign. Yeah, like, which which is no the entire which is the entire reason that the second game exists. It was, like, yeah, it was supposed to ha be like an an extremely robust like addition to make it Overwatch two, and it's like now it yeah, basically it really is it, just Overwatch one point five. It's not even Overwatch one point five. It's more like Overwatch zero point nine because it has less content than the first game. It's ridiculous. They are fumbling the, the bag so hard on this I fucking tend to franchise. I tend to forget that when they started Overwatch 2, they didn't even have all the content that Overwatch yeah. 2 had by the end of its life. And they exactly. still don't. They still don't. It's they're, What the fuck is Activision Blizzard doing? Oh, Af 
Activ- Activision Blizzard is digging themselves into a fucking ditch. That's what they're doing. Yeah, they're like going for the speed run for fastest like kamikaze for a company. <laughs> yeah. Just much. like absolutely imploding. And it's kind of It's a funny. shame too. Because Overwatch deserves much better than what it's getting, but... He, you know what else it's deserves me, better me than what it... Activision Blizzard. So. You know what else deserves better than what it's getting? Team Fortress 2. But that's a topic for another day. Rip. Wah, wah. Um, right, moving on. Now. Moving on. Persona 5 Tactica. Sure. Shit, we're getting a strategy RPG Persona game? Cool. It's... You know, you know the last time they did that, it was called Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. <laughs> so, except it wasn't turn-based strategy. <laughs> I mean, sure. I'm not sure if I'll play it, but it looks neat. Yeah, I'll play it. I can tell you that much. But ha- that, I'm how so much, much more are they going to milk Persona Five in particular? Find out okay. on the next ex- uh, exciting episode. Find out in the next exciting episode when we have three more Persona 5 games. (laughs) Yeah. You know? uh, I don't know. They have not made a Persona 5 fighter yet, so... I really, really want them to. Yes. That's, like, the one spinoff that I really fucking want. That's the thing. Like, Persona 4 Arena was, like, really well-liked. It's so good. How did they not make a Persona 5 version for this? Yeah, like, come on, man. It'd be so easy. They did a dancing game. They did this. They did 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 a a Dynasty Warriors version that is is story-wise canonically tied to the rest of the story. To the original game, not right. the royal, right. not to royal. the original the Persona basics. Five. Right, that's the fun. That's the fun twist. Yep. Um. So I'm interested to see how this one ties into the storyline. If it's the royal or the original, are we gonna have diverging timelines like Ocarina it's, of Time? It's, it's like it's like Dragon Ball. Yeah. Future Trunks is at it again. Yeah. So we get to see what's going on. Um. So yeah. No, I'm actually like. I'll play it for sure. I mean, uh, I like strategy RPGs, so it's up my alley. Uh, Starfield. Bethesda. Yeah. I mean, this was probably like one of the bigger announcements at the showcase, but if it's not your cup of tea, then it, whatever. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure people are, that are interested, that have been interested in this game because they've known about its existence for a while. It's really nice to see the, you know, some stuff on it, but I'm not interested. So the next one is is it Juicent? Juicent. Juicent. Okay. What else has Don't Nod done? Oh, Question. oh, I know. Um, hold on. Okay. I feel. Oh, that sounds really familiar. have they done they did life is strange studio okay cool i was gonna say i remember let's playing a game from don't nod and i called them daunt nod that That makes sense daunt nod uh okay so yeah so we'll see how this yeah let's let's find out what juson does uh like how that turns out um still wakes the deep sure um, so horror, horror game set in the ocean. So neat. Yeah. Uh, like, I tried to watch the trailer. It wasn't interesting enough to hold my interest. Dungeons of Hinterburg. Okay, this one. I like the art pretty style. Pretty nice. I love the yeah. art style for this game. This looks like it looks it, like a modern Nino Kuni. Not really that. Um, I mean, in terms of art style. In terms of art style, a little bit. I mean, not uh, the not the character models, but like the scenery. No. I can I can see. I that. just mean like the art yeah. direction. But it's actually set it it's set in the Alps, I believe. I'm interested. Yeah. Um. And it seems like a like a little bit more condensed like action RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping it comes to a system that I can actually play a video game on. Yeah, I. Exactly. PlayStation 5. Um, 
or Switch, but yeah. they probably won't. Um, but we'll see. Yep. So yeah, interested. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 has its one and only expansion announced. Uh, Phantom Liberty. Whoa. Uh, okay. Cities Skylines 2. Whoa. All right, here's another one for Jack. <laughs> Metaphor Reef Fantasio. Did I say that right? I don't know. Reef Fantasio? Fantasio. I think it's Reef. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's Reef Fantasio. Fantasio. Okay. It's made by the Persona team, but it's not a Persona game, and it's not an SMT game. But it is a Persona and SMT game. Uh, it looks interesting. I'll probably play it. Oh yeah, it no, this game looks pretty sick. I like. It, it has been announced for other systems. Uh, by the way, this is not going to be an Xbox exclusive. I'll probably get it on PS5. <laughs> yeah. My PS5 could use more nice games. I forgot that so you had I a can... PS5. He does. I do. We I both was, do. I've actually. I didn't mention this earlier, but I have been playing the PS5 version of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot on it a little bit. So. Wow. Because you get a free upgrade if you have the PS4 discs out. It's true, you do. Uh, did you platinum it for the PS4? No. Or did you even beat it? Oh. I beat it on PS4. I got to the post game, and oh, okay. so I have. You just didn't I have platinum. all. I have all those extra trophies a second time, but I didn't platinum. Yeah. Because I platinumed it, and then, and then you got the platinum uh, for the for the PS5 yeah. version. Yeah, I just Easy downloaded money. the update, went to the start menu, and I was like, "Thanks," and then I haven't touched it since. And I even like <laughs> bought the PS5 version. Like I traded my PS4 copy in. I was like, I'm going to buy the PS5 version because it's like 20 bucks. So it's like, whatever. Al is uh, our live viewer saying till P6 comes out. At this point, I don't even know if we're ever going to get a Persona 6. Like, they're really waiting and biding their time. Trying to milk everything they can before they get Persona 6 out the door. That's what Metaphor is. Metaphor is going to be your P6. They're just not going to call it that. They're, they're uh, going to skip to they're going to skip to P7. Yeah, they are. Towerborn. Don't know. I just skimmed the trailer, and it looks kind of boring. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it has a cool art. Yeah, it, it's colorful, I'll give it that. But, like, I don't care about the gameplay or anything. It didn't grab me. Clockwork Revolution. I like how this article tells me it, my exact thoughts after skimming the trailer. It's not Bioshock. And by that I mean Shocking. it is Bioshock. It looks like it anyway. Alright. So the last thing Microsoft went over was a new color for the Series S. In fairness, it is not just a new color, it is a memory storage upgrade as well. Because the original the original Series S's only have like 500 gigabytes. This one's one terabyte, so I mean, I 512. guess... 512. 512, yes. I just rounded. it. But yeah, so yeah. for $50 more, getting double the storage is okay, I guess. But like, yeah. if you weren't going to get a Series S nope. before, this isn't going to make you want one. And if you wanted a Series S, it's probably because you were going to you know, spend as little as possible. So you're probably just going to buy the $300 one. It's like, who is this for, actually, now that I think about it? Uh, people who want every single version of a console from Microsoft. Because, like, I, I mean, I I guess the price is different enough versus the, you know, flagship $500 uh, Xbox Series X. But, like, it's just so weird to price to have this version that's, like, priced higher than the model people are getting for the affordable budget version. And then not be actually more substantiatively featured than that version, besides just a storage upgrade. I don't get it. Man. I don't know. It's definitely not for me. I mean, it's 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 more. Uh, what's the word? It's more um, pragmatic than an Xbox fridge. 
Yeah. I'll say this. If it also had a disk drive, and it was like 400 bucks... That actually would make sense, like a like a down pot, like an underpowered version that still has the yeah. disk drive in the middle. Like I could see a lane where like people are interested in that, but like yeah, no, I don't I don't get this release that they're going for. I mean, there's never enough Xbox games for me to warrant to buy an Xbox usually. Um, yeah. That like interests me that I can't already get on other systems. And I don't need an Xbox because if I'm going to buy a game on Xbox, it's already on PC and my laptop is like good enough for that anyway. So like, yeah. I get what I get so, what Xbox is for. It's for the people that like the ecosystem, but do not have a gaming computer. But like that crowd is just kind of like, it's, it's kind of fluid. Like you just have people that will just get like a PS5 or just, or will just get yeah. a gaming lap computer. So like, I don't know. I, don't know. I... And I mean, I wouldn't mind playing the Halo games. There, I said it. Wow. I said it. I'd play a first-person shooter. Wow. Yeah. But, I don't know. There's not really a system for me. Oh, well. All right. Uh, moving um, on. we got more stuff to cover. Ubisoft Forward had a thing. Whoa. I know we're going to skip most of this anyway, but yeah, we're, we're just doing our due diligence. Okay, let's go quick. Uh, Avatar has a game. Frontiers of Pandora. Sure. Pass. It's Far Cry. Pass. X I mean, Defiant. It's cool, I guess. Uh, Pass. It's a new Tom Clancy's. Exactly. It's a free to play. That's why I had no interest. Oh, was just this was also shown off at Summer Game Fest. I don't know why it wasn't in that article. I'm sorry, I picked a very bad article for. Uh, Summer Game Fest. Summer Game Fest one, yeah. It only covered what they considered, what the person that made the article probably considered the big releases. Yeah. They missed a lot. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, which was announced at the Summer Game Fest and then showed off more at uh, Ubisoft Forward. Does anyone have thoughts on Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown? It's a side-scroller? It is a side-scroller, Metroidvania-like... Dude. That actually like looks kind of. That looks kind of sick, to be it, honest. It could be cool if they don't fuck it up. So right, right, right. It looks fine. My only issue is it's a Ubisoft game. Yeah, exactly. True. That's why I'm kind of anything sus- from Ubisoft suspicious. is like nowadays is like you gotta keep your expectations in check. Do you know the last Ubisoft game? you bought new Rayman Legends and that was 10 years ago when did that come out yeah that was 2013 my my answer is Far Cry 4 and that was what 2014 my answer might be be further back probably is so so here's the funny thing I think the last actually uh technically Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, okay, the, yeah. the new oh, version, yeah. is a Ubisoft game. Yeah. But I'm not counting that because it's not Ubisoft made, it was just Ubisoft published. I'm can talking I, about from an in-house Ubisoft. Go ahead. Can I be honest? I think the last time I got a Ubisoft game new was before they changed their logo to add to have like the spiral that they're known for having for their logo, which is a long time ago. That's that. I, I hope that answers your question well enough. Yeah. Uh, no, I. It, it's been I had a, a feeling time. because when I when I, this got announced and was like being shown off, I was like, "What was the last like Ubisoft game I like bought like new, near ish release?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, it was Far Cry 4. I put like four hours into that game. Same. Yeah. It's not worth your time. So wouldn't that also technically be your answer, Jack? Because didn't you get that pretty close to launch? Um, I th- or did you wait a little bit? I think I waited a little bit. I don't even think I actually ever bought it. Or did I? Oh, I don't remember. I thought you had it. I don't remember if I own it or not. <laughs> okay, well... I remember playing yeah. it, I just don't... I don't know, maybe I... I, I don't know. I would have to go look. Yeah, but that—that's my answer for. Oh, you know last what? Ubisoft Actually, 
I know what my last uh, Ubisoft game was because I completely forgot that this was uh, published by them. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was No More Heroes 2. Is that in-house no, Ubisoft? No, no, they published that, it. That was published. They published. But that's still like that if is, that's as far back as he has to go for a. Ubisoft I have to go back to 2010. Game, yeah. Yeah. It's it's pretty sad. Yeah, I was saying I'm like, like in house, but yeah, that's still. I'm, I'm I'm scrolling through and I'm not finding anything after No More Heroes 2 that I've gotten of theirs, and that's just considering like anything they even touched, like even published, like nothing. Okay, let's keep going with this shite. Um, the Division Resurgence is a new mobile game. Who cares? Uh, Skull and Bones got a beta announcement. Uh, the Crew Motorfest, uh, which is the third entry of The Crew. Um, Assassin's Creed Nexus uh, is a VR yeah, game. Stuff. Can I? Can I just say that looking at that title I don't think I have ever been more turned off by a game's title than Assassin's Creed Nexus VR I there you go I can't even pretend to give a shit about that it's no who and then another and then Assassin's Creed Mirage yeah so I, they showed off more of Assassin's Creed Mirage why do they still they make off- Assassin's Creed they showed off more uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Oh. So, that was Ubisoft. Fucking Ubisoft. That is very bad. Nothing of interest. Okay, so the last one we're going to go over is the Capcom Showcase. Um, because this is, like, the last one. Um, they did a deep dive into Dragon's Dogma 2. Which, once again, is looking really good. I don't even... What is... Uh, Pragmata? Pragma, Pragmata. Uh, Pragmata. I remember uh, hearing was, about the announcement for it, uh, and unfortunately they... Yeah, they, they had to delay it. Yeah, it's been delayed. Um, they don't or, know when it's coming out, but I mean, at least they're being upfront about it. Yeah. Um, I I don't really care. The, the only thing I care about from Capcom, minus Dragon's Dogma 2... Um, but we had already known about that, um, is Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. Fuck I mean, yeah. The 20, one thing 24. that fucking matters in this dog shit presentation from this company. And let's, let, being objective, if you don't care about the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy, a lot of people said that this present, this showcase was dog shit. Yeah. Just complete garbage. Like, there were so many people that were underwhelmed by this showcase. Ace Attorney is all that truly matters. Ace Attorney 7 win, too. Like, I want that as well. I mean, I'm happy that my constant request for an Apollo trilogy on the Switch has finally Mm -hmm. been answered. But now can you get us another game? Like, another new one, please. But it is going to a a platform. You know what's funny? What's that? It's... According to this article, it's only coming to PS4 and Xbox One uh, and Switch and PC. But it's not having a native PS5 or Series X version. That is weird. That is in, that is weird. Huh. Well, I mean, I'm going to get it on the Switch, so I don't really give a shit, but like... I yeah. bet you, So I bet you any money that like... Because it's... I mean, considering now... You said this... Um, you said this uh, off-stream... But uh, you mentioned that like they are basically trying to get uh, people to buy this in order to make a, n- a new game. So they probably didn't even oh. bother with like. No, that's a uh, ghost trick. In. Oh, ghost trick. Ghost trick, yeah. Which we'll okay. talk about here in a second. Yeah. But yeah, ghost trick is the one where the the main guy is like, if this if someone buys this remat make or remaster of ghost trick. Uh, we might make a suit. But yeah. Um, Exo Primal got a new trailer. It's a fucking online BS thing. Don't care. Ghost Trick. They announced a demo that's available to play right now. Go go play the demo. It's Ghost Trick. Uh, yeah. 
Kidetsu Gami, is that what we said? The Path of the Godless, uh, got another Kidetsu trailer. Gami. Yeah. It's, I think it was just a rerun of the same trailer from uh, the Xbox showcase. Yeah, that's another reason why the showcase was so underwhelming is like half the stuff they showed off was already announced at a different presentation. Yep. Um, and then Mega Man X Dive Offline is coming to Steam, iOS, and Android. Sure. Man. You, you you got you got me with Mega Man, and then you lost me when you just said Steam, iOS, and Android. Yeah, it's I don't, I don't it's like supposed that. to be it's supposed to be a it, I think it was a mobile game that yeah. now you have the access to the the whole game without like having awful, to do yeah. all the yeah the, the like the stupid you know gotcha online element and stuff. Why is it not on also Switch at least? It seems like know, a man. Switch game. Yeah. Like, like I can They're, understand maybe not bringing it to PS5 and Series X because you know the hardcore, but it it looks like a like something that you could easily bring to the Switch. Yeah, like I'm looking at it and I'm like, this looks like you can put this on the Switch. You could put it on you could put it on anything really. It should be on all of the systems. So my guess but is it it, it should but it have definitely. A but it definitely should be on the Switch if it's on, like, Steam and iOS and Android. Because yeah. it's clearly meant to be a game that they wanted people to be able to play portably. Yeah. So, I don't it's know. It's originally a mobile game. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll get a Switch release for it. They're okay. They're kind of locking themselves in. As of this recording, like we said, this is June 15th when we're talking about all this shit. Yeah. Who knows what happens, but Nintendo went onto fucking Twitter and announced the most important thing of our goddamn lives. I think it was, what was it, June 1st? Uh, yeah, June 1st. June 1st, they announced everybody won to Switch. Hell so we might not have gotten yeah. a Nintendo Direct, but we're getting a new 1 2 Switch. We shot everybody. <laughs> One two switch a game let, let, that we need no to put one, this into perspective. No one asked for. Yeah, so let's put it into perspective. Arms, which I mean, you know, take it or leave it, was a game that people were at least interested in when it came out. Um, has not gotten a follow up game yet since it first came out in 2017. We have not gotten a new Mario 3D platformer since Mario Odyssey, which came out on the Switch's launch year, so we're um, still waiting on those. Unless you count Bowser's Fury, but, you know, which, no full that's, game. That's a, yeah. And I, I, this is just, like, two things. We can go off on, like, a tangent of, like, all these other things that Nintendo's made one installment for so far on the Switch, and we haven't gotten a follow-up for it despite all these other things. And 1-2 Switch is getting a follow-up before it. And like, why? One two switch is such a like. People didn't even why? want to buy one two switch when it came. When it came, when they like didn't. Came well, it, it wasn't packed in with the fucking console, so no one gave yeah. a shit about it. It was a pack-in game that was not packed in. Yeah, exactly. Right. And unlike Wii Sports and Nintendo Land, it's kind of smelly. Yeah, it's and, uh, uh, not a good game. I mean, it's... Okay. Yeah, Nintendo didn't really have anything to announce, which but, falls in line with what they gave for reasoning as to why they weren't doing E3. They just said they didn't have a lot to show off. But so, Well, no one did E3. Fire Emblem 7, yeah. though. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. Just saying that, I'm just saying that the reason that Nintendo gave was we don't have enough to show off. That, like take it or leave it that's what they that's what they their reasoning for leaving e3 even though obviously just e, leaving e3 is just a good idea in general just don't do e3 it's, you don't need it but yeah but it, it makes it harder to name this podcast if if we don't have one thing yeah yeah but uh but yeah i know nintendo just they didn't show anything off because they said they didn't have anything uh i don't think that's going to change this is probably most of what we're getting Unless they just stealth drop like a Nintendo Direct like in two days, I don't know. Um, now, like I mentioned, we 
Anime Expo is early July, um, and it sounds like Bandai Namco and Atlas are going to have spots there, so we might see more of some of the games. But we of might course also... Bandai Namco would make an appearance there. They own like 90% of anime. But we might also get a drop for Budokai Tenkaichi 4. That's what I was... Yeah. That's probably... That's like the one game that I want to see more of that has not been like shown... Like, I want to see, I want to see the actual gameplay. The yeah. one minute trailer where they, you know, induce the nostalgia with the CRT. It's not enough. I want to see Super Saiyan Blue Goku fighting Beerus or some shit. Just give me something. Okay. So I have two, two things and then I'll let you guys go. One, what are some of your favorite games uh, from the announcements? Um, so far, well, yeah, so far, um... Yeah, you can say so far. Sonic Superstars is the big one. Um, again, I'm still cautiously optimistic about it, but... And that's his top game. He's cautiously optimistic <laughs> of the game he... Okay, well, okay, top. but that's the thing. It has the hot. It has the highest ceiling, I think. Because, that's like, fair. it has potential to be... Like, when is it? Does, does it have a release date yet? Uh, November? Fall. It's like fall. Okay. Uh, it has day. potential to be the best game to come out this year. But... And you're saying that in the same year you're, where we you're had Resident Evil 4 is, remake? Yeah. That's... Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, that's... You know, that's... I guess I w I think he forgets what year we're in. I... Sometimes I do. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, it could definitely be the best game that gets released that was announced this holiday season. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what? That's that's more what I meant to say. Like yeah. more more accurate. This I, year was super packed in the front half. Front, front, yeah, it was super front loaded. Yeah. This is super front loaded and the back half from everything they've shown off has been not what we usually play. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, if it's if you're like one of our kind of, you know, we we play different games than you know a lot of the I guess the general casual mark audience that like a lot of people, a lot of like companies are aiming at that like that larger demographic that we're just not part of. So I'm sure there's more people that are more interested in a lot of these games, but like for us, it's like there's just like nothing coming out, man. Um, I think Sword of the Sea looks cool. Um, even if it is just journey, but s skateboarding. Um, I hope it has Goldfinger in the soundtrack. Better. <laughs> um, I honestly hope Anthony, uh, fuck, what's his name? I the, am the, uh, the composer for journey. Yeah, God, I should know. And this. Abzu I, and the Pathless. I should. Oh, he hasn't. Con he hasn't confirmed whether or not he's returning. Not that, from what I've seen. I I hope he is at least returning for uh, the music. I was gonna say, like, when uh, speaking of which, when they um, when news was getting around about Sonic Superstars, because it's... as Sonic games typically do, they announced it, and then there's a lot of tweets and stuff that. And interviews where like a lot of stuff gets confirmed around that announcement mm -hmm. and they announced that T Lopes is contributing to the music on Superstars so he's working with Jun Sanoi so that already has a lot of potential because T Lopes knows how to make classic Sonic music he did Mania's OST Yep. so if him and Jun Sanoi are working on this like classic inspired but modernized classic kind of game musically we're, we're it's another good Sonic OST, I'm sure. It's, it's it hasn't Austin, even come out yet, and I already know it. It's Austin Wintery, by the way. Austin. See, that's I, that's why I couldn't think of the last name, because I was saying the first name wrong. Yep. Austin uh, Wintery. Jack, anything else yeah. you're excited for? I mean, Persona 3 Remake and Apollo Justice Trilogy. It's, you know, sad that two of the games that I named are just, like, ports and remakes, but, you know... <laughs> like yeah. uh, you know as like we said not a whole lot coming out of, in the second half of the year um, 
And I mean, a lot of these announcements aren't even coming out in the second half of the year. A lot of these games are 2024. Yeah. Like Persona and Apollo. Yeah. Persona 3 and Apollo are next year games. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, whoop de doo So, my, uh, I think I have like five games I can say that I'm excited or at least interested in. Uh, Phantom Blade Zero is like the first game that's been announced in this whole cycle that I'm interested in. Uh, Sonic Superstars, obviously. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, obviously. Uh, God, what's, what are the other ones? Persona 3 Reload. And, oh, Sandland. Sandland. I'm excited for Sandland. Those are like the five that I'm interested in the most. And yeah, I I'm, down... I'm still, I'm oh. still like weirdly interested in Foam Stars. Because you're weird. I am. I don't know. Like, yeah. I know it. Um, okay. I, I mean, I wrote down a couple games, um, so I'll just go through my list. Most of mine is what you guys are interested in anyway. Uh, Sword of the Sea, Revenant Hill, Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh, yeah, Revenant Hill. Sonic Superstars, um, Sandland, uh, Persona 3 Reload, Persona 5, Tactica, um, Metaphor, Apollo Justice Trilogy. Oh, yeah, Metaphor then, looks good, too. Yeah. And then if... Uh, so I do need to look into 33 Immortals. Remind me to do that after we're done with this. Um, and then if Dungeons of Hinterburg comes to a system that I can play it on, i.e. PS5 Switch, because my laptop, I, it's not for gaming. It's for That's right. making it's only this a, podcast. It's, a, it's Xbox console exclusive right now and PC, right? That's from what they've announced. So I'm hoping it comes to a console I can play it on so I can play it. Yeah. Because uh, it does look interesting. But yeah. So those are my games. Um, I know you guys didn't watch them, but would, do you guys want to rank, based off the announcements, uh, your tiers of the these five uh, events that we went over? PlayStation Showcase, Summer Game Fest, uh, Xbox Showcase, Ubisoft Forward, and Capcom. Oh god. Um It's hard to say. Um, I know. I can go. Uh, yeah, go I'll ahead. say Honestly, I think just for the variety of games shown off, I think Xbox probably had my favorite lineup overall. Uh Summer Game Fest was good. Um PlayStation Showcase was okay. I mean, obviously, there was a couple things there that I was interested in, but, you know, the rest is, like, whatever. Um, and then, just out of bias alone, Capcom and then Ubisoft, because I could not give a shit about Ubisoft, but, I mean, they're both, they both weren't. Capcom is probably worse off because a lot of their stuff was already shown off before. Like, Capcom mm -hmm. went after these places that were showing off their big things. So by the time Capcom actually got to do anything, all they really had to show off was Apollo Justice, and that was it. So, but I mean, they still had better quality stuff to announce, in my opinion, than Ubisoft. So I'll put them above. But yeah, I think honestly, I guess Xbox was probably my favorite one. None of them were particularly great. Yeah. I'm. I don't know. I'm. I guess I kind of agree with Cloud. I. I guess Microsoft had the best one, but I don't know. None of these are really winners, especially not Ubisoft. Jesus Christ. All right, so I'm going to go bottom top. Uh, Ubisoft. Uh, I'll put... Let's go... Summer Game Fest. I'm being real harsh. Uh, because there was a lot of stuff there, and uh, yeah, no, true. never mind. And I mean, never outside mind. of a few things, yeah, Summer Game Fest didn't show off the best stuff. I'm gonna go no, uh, Ubisoft, PlayStation, Summer Game Fest, Microsoft, Capcom, only because they showed off Apollo Justice. That's the only thing I care about. And then above that, everybody went to Switch Tweet. True. <laughs> that was that was that was. The Beast. Oh, well, actually, and above that, Fire Emblem 7 uh, coming to uh, Nintendo Fire Switch Emblem Online. Fire Emblem 7 coming to Switch Online, yeah. Yeah, that's, that is the K 
king of the summer gaming announcements is summer uh, Fire Emblem 7 coming to Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass members. Read it in a week, folks. <laughs> Bam. All right, Cloud. Um, that's all I had for this. Do you, do you have anything you want to um, finish us off uh, with? Sure. Uh, my one question to all of you guys. Um, so, there's a lot of games that could be rumored to exist or that we know exist that we didn't get announcements for uh, in this cycle. Um, is there anything that stood out that you haven't seen shown off in this new cycle of the past few weeks that you really want there to be something announced, like something shown off for? I mean, I think the easy one for Jack and I is Metroid Prime 4. Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. Yeah. Please? Because that's something we'd know about. Right. We've um, had I we've mean, had all three I'll, game all three Xenoblade games on the Switch since Metroid Prime 4 was announced. I'll be that sucker and I'll say that like I'm still interested in finding out what we're gonna get with the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. I'm kinda surprised that they didn't have a Pokemon Presents to show anything off yet. Considering the last Pokemon Presents was when they announced it back in February, so I'm I, I hope that they have something to show for that soon. Considering they're supposed to be getting the first DLC out like in the fall. I don't know though. Uh, I mean, yeah, you guys mentioned Metroid Prime Four, and other than that, like, there's nothing that's like actually like known to exist yet that they hasn't been shown off already like a lot of the stuff that a lot of the stuff we finally got confirmation on and then they start you know elaborating on it but like it's been it's been kind of a dry year it's it's one of those years where i think yeah uh, they're they're building up for something and we might see more stuff in 2024 2025 or it could just be we just could be hitting a lull period in gaming i don't know but We'll have to wait and see, but it's a very weird year. This year, there's just not a whole lot. So, I mean, obviously, we didn't get anything from Nintendo. Right. And I think that's, for us, that is what usually our like, big thing is usually around is Nintendo. Yeah. Um, actually, we have a we Nintendo have, bias. We have enough time to maybe just kind of talk about this really quick, but... Okay. Do you guys have a have any like hypothesis as to why Nintendo hasn't really doesn't really have anything to show off this year, or you just kind of like kind of just going with it, basically? I wouldn't because I mean I have I have a theory. I wouldn't be surprised if they're working on the new Mario game, and they just don't have like enough ready for a trailer. True, because they might not have a vertical slice that they can show off for anything. Mm -hmm. uh because like i have to imagine that's like something that they're working on right now because it's been close to six years since mario oh Odyssey. that's another thing uh the next mario kart dlc that we don't know anything about it yet and it's it's been a little while since the last one true true if i had to take a guess i was expecting it mid this week them announcing in Nintendo direct I'm hoping they announce a Nintendo Direct for next week. That'd be uh, cool. I. That, that's so, my take. So my theory is a little kind of strong arm, I'm not going to lie. I think that the reason why they didn't have much to show off is that they don't have big games planned for the remainder of the year. I legitimately think that they are planning for next year and beyond. That could also mean that they might also be working on the Switch's successor and they're working for games for the launch period for that. It could just mean that, like Jack said, they could just be working on the next big Mario game and just don't have enough to show for it. Because, um, I mean, we just got Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and that's their biggest release so far. But they've also released quite a few other games this year already. Like, they finally released Advance Wars 1 and 2. They had Fire Emblem Engage earlier this year. 
So Nintendo, more than anyone, they've really front-loaded their stuff. So I think that they legitimately do not have a lot to announce for the remainder of the year. There's going to be something because you have to have something. And Nintendo, even if it's something small like, you know, uh, what was it, 2018, they had stuff like, wait, what year did, uh, no, 2019 was when they had uh, the Link's Awakening remake, right, in the fall? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't have a big 2019 fall season. They had Pokemon. They had Link's Awakening. Um, there might be something that I'm missing, but 2019 holiday season was kind of quiet. So maybe 2023 is just going to be like that. They'll announce something kind of big, and that's probably going to be like their only game. And, you know, a lot of the other stuff might just be, you know, DLC expansion passes, uh, you know, just maybe prepping up for a few, for 2024. But that's my hypothesis. I think that they're, they're just light on content this year. I'll suggest right, that they, they could possibly be working on the next system. Yeah, like I said, I think that they're working on the Switch's successor. I don't think that they're going to announce it this year. I think that that's probably going to be like a the next year early announcement. Maybe they'll announce it late this year, but I think that's a little too early. But they, they have to be working on it, and that's probably why we're so light on content for the rest of the year. I think the only issue is we usually still get at least an October or November release, even if it's a year leading up to and we know there's another console. Like when um, when the Wii U was out the door and it was uh, like they still released Paper Mario Color Splash in October of 2016. So they did not have anything for the holiday season. Yeah. Yeah. Um. They didn't have much, but they did not have anything. So I think right. it's just, what are they going to release for the holiday season? And is it going to be... Every, I mean, everybody 1-2 Switch is coming up this summer. Same with Pikmin 4. So what are they releasing? It's, Even if it's just one game. That's true, too. We got Pikmin Even 4 coming up very soon. Uh... There should be an announcement for at least one game for this holiday season. If it, even if it's just like a Mario spinoff of some kind, because the DLCs for Pokemon and for uh, Mario Kart are not. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not that's not enough to constitute. Like I said, they're probably going to do something small, like they did with you know Link's Awakening and you know Pokemon Sword and Shield are like their only big 2019 things. So they got to announce something, but they probably don't have much. But the question is, is what will that game be, like you said? Yeah. We'll see. Hopefully, like I said, they have a full Nintendo Direct next week. We makes this whole conversation moot point, and then we have to tack on a whole Nintendo Direct conversation with our Tears of the Kingdom review. That'd be fun. What if they don't actually have a Nintendo Direct at all this month? I'm going to cry. Because, like, for all we know, they might not even have enough to show off in a direct. They might just tweet out, and that might be how we get the news for the the holiday games. You know what? I'm okay with that. I just want to know what they're doing this holiday season. Yeah. Because if the only thing I have to look forward to is Sonic Superstars... Well, that's actually really nice for my wallet, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know what you can do, Landon? If, you know, if Sonic Superstars is the only thing, there's all those Dragon Ball games you can revisit. Oh, man, but I'm in the middle of revisiting those right now. <laughs> True. And we'll probably yeah. have the ad episode earlier than that point. So Pro- Hopefully. I don't know. Well, it's like, what, Sonic Superstars and Persona 3 is November? And yeah. then, do we know when Dragon's Dogma 2 is coming out? God, I might Good actually question. buy that and play that on release if it's this year I don't think they have a release date oh thank god uh not until next year oh, and okay. it doesn't even have Oof. a specific release 2020 oh, perfect then all I have to do to this year is play more Tears of the Kingdom and I have to play through all three copies of The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie I'm buying on July 7th Jesus. <laughs> wow. I can play it on my Switch, on my PS4, and on my PS5. <laughs> Even though I don't have a PS4 anymore, so I'm just going to play the PS4 version oh, of the PS5. Oh, speaking of Trails, um, yes. when is... Uh, Legends of Nayuta 
Yes. Uh, September. I think September? it's September 17th for the West. Because uh, I mean, for North America. If it's gonna if it's gonna be a light year this year, then that game is completely on the table for me. Boom. You should. I. I have never played the game. You should buy it though. I mean, I saw it when you showed me like gameplay, and it looks like I know. It kind of harkens back to like PlayStation One era action RPGs. Like it kind of reminded me of like a Threads of Fate style, like you know, suit like not a hundred percent chibi, but like a little, but not like super like realistic anime style like they go for nowadays. It's a little bit more cartoony, and I, I like it. I'm 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 all for I'm all for it. The gameplay looks nice, so that's a game that I'm looking forward to that had literally zero presence in anything we talked about today and you know what we're gonna have a full podcast episode about legend of nayuta (laughs) (laughs) jack yeah you don't you don't have to buy the game to be part of the podcast okay but it would help maybe i I'm not actually forcing I, us to have a podcast I, I know, about I'm, it. I'm kidding. Yeah. We could always make it a Patreon. Just playing along. We a nice, could a nice, that. a nice quick one hour, one hour and a half, you know, some shorter discussion where we just talk about it. Yeah. Just throw just, that in there. There you go. Look at that. Upgrade to the five dollar tier when Cloud actually makes it. Like I said, and I, we I, make content for the five dollar yes. tier or six dollar tier. Six dollar tier. Is. I, I did, uh, I did mention. Um, I plan to have that by the time this goes out to Spotify and all the other platforms next oh, okay. week. So. Yeah, we'll make content for it very soon. Uh, someone has to finish a Let's Play. Hi, it's me. It took me a second to realize you're pointing at me because on my screen, you're pointing in the opposite direction of me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Here, I'll Live. point so it makes sense for me, people, and I'll point people, so it makes sense people, for you guys. People listening on Spotify and YouTube and stuff, you none of this is relevant to you. Yeah, yeah we're doing camera we're shit. Our games. Yeah. All um, right, I want to eat nachos, yeah. so we're leaving now. Yeah, I want to eat Do the outro. Run the outro. Run, bye. Run the uh, bye. Okay, bye. Thank you for listening to the Gaming Stooges Talks podcast. If you enjoyed us, consider subscribing to our podcast RSS feed or follow us on youtube.com slash gaming stooges and twitch.tv slash gaming stooges for more gaming content. If you'd like to chat with us, join our Discord. The link can be found in the episode description. We also want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Your continued support means a lot to us. Not already one? Please take a look at what we have to offer anyone who becomes a patron at patreon.com slash gaming stooges. See you next time.